Some 400 years of slavery, the Israelites have left Egypt. That night, when an Israelite householder sacrificed a lamb, he became the priest of the family. And when he splattered the blood on the doorpost, he became their protector. And when they ate the meat of the lamb, he became their provider. Yeshua celebrated the Passover in the house. Following Jesus' tradition, he served unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and roast lamb. After Yeshua broke the matzah, that's unleavened bread with uh, holes in it, symbolizing the traumatized body of Christ, he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Messianic Jews serve three loaves of bread symbolizing Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Each one is wrapped separately in linen. Then they only break the middle loaf which is the Son. They eat one half and the father of the family hides the other half. Later, the family searches, finds, and then eats it. This symbolizes Yeshua lying in his grave for three days and three nights. They call this half Afikomen, which for Jews means, I will come, whilst for Christians, it means, I have come. Four cups of wine based on Exodus, the sixth chapter, six and seven verses, which reads, Say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people. I will take you as my own people. And then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from the yoke of the Egyptians. The first cup is called the cup of sanctification because Hashem sanctified Israel by restoring his relationship with them saying, I am your Elohim. The second cup is called the cup of deliverance because God delivered Israel from slavery in Egypt with mighty acts. It is also called the cup of wrath because God poured out his wrath on Egyptians. Later, Yeshua suffered the wrath of God, redeeming us when he carried the sins of the world on his cross. Jews do not drink this cup, but dip their fingers in the cup, then sprinkling the wine on a napkin whilst naming each plague against Egypt, blood, frogs, lice, flies, livestock, pestilence, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and death of the firstborn children. The third cup is called the cup of redemption. Because God said, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Yeshua redeemed us from our slavery to sin. By his blood, his arms outstretched on a cross. Christians celebrate only the third cup of redemption. Yeshua said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the first covenant, God's law was written on stone. Atonement was obtained through sacrifice of the bodies and blood of animals. Under the new covenant, God's law is written on our hearts and in our mind. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. When I will make a new covenant, I will put my law in their minds and inscribe it on their hearts. I will be their God 
and they will be my people. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. The Lord's Supper celebrates covenant between two parties. The Lamb has offered His body and blood, and we offer to proclaim His death. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Macro indicators of taking the supper unworthily include when you gather to break bread from house to house, share your meal especially with the poor and with the newcomers. Failing to do so means taking the Lord's supper unworthily. Failing to proclaim Christ's death to those who do not know that Christ died for them, not warning them that without Him they face a dismal eternity means taking the Lord's Supper unworthily. Dividing clergy from laymen means taking the Lord's Supper unworthily. The death of Yeshua, the, the temple veil was torn from top to bottom, abolishing the middle wall of separation, such that we no longer need the services of a professional priest. God has ordained all believers a priesthood that ministers Yeshua's blood one another as equals who love, serve, pray, encourage, being kind and tender-hearted, forgiving and seeking each another's good. The Israelites ate their Passover meal in their homes standing up, wearing bells and boots. Immediately afterwards, they marched out of Egypt in obedience to God. Yeshua HaMashiach ate the Last Supper and then marched to his death on a cross in obedience to the Father. Yeshua's final command to us remains, Go, make disciples by teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. Thus, not to obey Him means to take the Lord's Supper unworthily. He has said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Yeshua stood up during the supper and washed His disciples' feet, saying, Since I, your Lord and Rabbi, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. A guru washing the feet of his disciples was not only a huge lesson in humility, but the act incorporated them into his body. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Having thusly anointed their feet for ministry, he would later command, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And Paul would say, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the gospel of peace. To imitate Christ, we must first wash the feet of the newcomers, incorporate them into the body of Christ, thereby issuing them their marching orders. The fourth cup is called the cup of praise, because God said, I will take you as my people. God has made from Israel and from us Gentiles a kingdom of priests to the nations. Yeshua chose not to drink the fourth cup because he had not yet died on the cross with outstretched arms. He said that he would drink it new in his kingdom when it will become the cup of an everlasting covenant for Jews and Gentiles alike. Soon, all the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdom of our Lord after this gospel of the kingdom has been preached in all the world. Then the end will come. For this to happen, every believer must not only understand but implement the message of the Lord's Supper. Shalom.